Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast is number 1,367. The topic is Q&A and the title is Squat, High Bar versus Low Bar. Hmm. So we had a listener send in a question. Uh, they said that in past podcasts I had mentioned that I've worked with CrossFit Games athletes and coaches, and that's true. I do coach uh, CrossFit coaches. Um Often it's for strength or rehab work. We also do a lot of nutritional coaching because uh, a lot of people in CrossFit world come from very self-abusive type of uh, nutritional backgrounds. So I I do work with CrossFit uh, coaches, athletes, uh, and I love it. It's really a lot of fun. So they continued and said, I'm a CrossFit athlete wanting to transition into powerlifting. I squat high bar but I see a lot of power lo- power lifters who squat low bar. Which position should I use? So I thought that would be a good topic for today's, uh, just a general discussion of uh, high bar versus low bar. I'm going to cover a lot in today's podcast, but there's this is something that you could have kind of an ongoing conversation with and very in-depth one. So I'm going to cover a lot of the highlights and open it up to any follow-up questions if people have anything that you want to throw out there uh, that you want me to come back and touch on this again in a pa- another podcast or if you just want a quick answer in an email. So please uh, listen to whatever I'm going to say today. <laughs> and uh, But make note if something you want to ask or a topic you would like more clarity on isn't discussed, email me, brutalirongym at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to uh, kind of touch on that. So the general p- positional benefits, if you look at high bar versus low bar, uh, if you have no clue what in the world I'm talking about, you'll learn more throughout today's podcast, but you can also just pause the podcast and search on YouTube. If you type uh, high bar squat uh, setup and low bar squat setup, you'll see videos and people like showing descriptions. There's about 4 million of them and they're all going to be relatively similar. So that would be helpful to kind of help with today's like comprehension of what we're talking about today. So in a sense, a high bar squat position, the bar is going to sit kind of on the top ridge, uh, like well, the top of the shoulder blades. And this is going to be kind of the highest position other than that bump on the back of your neck. Don't ever put a barbell on the top of that bump. I think it's like your seventh seventh vertebra. Don't put it there. You'd actually put the bar right behind that. But it's on the top edge of your shoulder blades. This is common in uh, any kind of uh, like Olympic lifting, CrossFit. They're going to commonly do high bar positioning. Uh, Low bar position, you put the bar lower down and you kind of use like what's called the spine of the scapula as bracing, but it's mostly going to be your rear delts. A lot of rear delts get involved in holding the bar in position when you do a low bar squat position. Also, a high bar squat position, your torso is much more uprighted than a low bar position. So in a low bar position for squatting, you don't stand with your torso totally upright. You do want to extend your hips, you do want to extend your legs, but you're going to notice that you just have a, a more forward tilt to your torso in low bar squatting than you do in high bar squatting. And that's normal, that's part of just the positional difference, uh, but that's essentially the positioning of the bar. High bar goes on top of the shoulder blades. Whereas low bar goes over the spine of the scapula, like there's a little ridge bone to the shoulder blades, and it sits on your rear delts. Uh, So uh, delts are just a fancy word, uh, deltoids, uh, which is a fancy word for your shoulders. So it sits on the back of your shoulders, so it touches typically a lot more muscle mass. It'll just kind of touch all across your back. Uh, Where high bar sometimes does not touch the shoulders, kind of depends on the development of the traps and um, how high or low set uh, the person's like shoulders are. Uh, But it's all like in general going to be those differences. High bar is on top of the shoulder blades, low bar is across the spine of the scapula and back side of the shoulders, the rear delts. Now, the high bar position uh, tends to allow your torso to be more upright throughout the squatting, so therefore it places greater amount of workload into the thighs rather than um, kind of the, the posterior chain like the back side of the hips. So. In a high bar position, the torso is more upright, which means that you have a de- greater degree of bend at the knee angle. Uh, now, this is all like a little bit different here, but you're going to have a greater degree, like a greater sharing of 
um, degrees of bend between the hip and the knee. Whereas if you have low bar, you're going to bend a lot more, like hinge a lot more at the hip uh, joint. So you're going to have a greater degree of kind of a bending at the hip joint. So the extension uh, work to stand back up is going to be much greater into the hips. So high bar is more thighs. Low bar is going to develop and focus more of like your glutes, hamstrings, and then your low back and core are going to be more st like uh, stimulated and asked to do more in a low bar position than a high bar position. So high bar, one of the ways that it's very helpful is it helps develop Olympic lifting strength. So if you're a CrossFit athlete and you would do cleans and snatches and front squats and thrusters, you would be doing a lot of movements in which an uprighted torso would be necessary. So therefore back squatting, barbell back squatting, uh, in a high bar like uprighted torso position makes sense. It's how you're going to make your legs stronger in positions that you're going to use for other lifts. It also does have less abdominal stress, uh, now like kind of core. So if somebody has a weak lower back, high bar position, if their body type uh, allows it, is going to be probably a, a better way to train them, you know, initially. Now you can eventually build them to low bar, but you would have to take time to develop the core strength. So it kind of depends on uh, those factors. Uh, also, low bar position tends to demand more out of thoracic um, mobility. So sometimes people will say like their shoulders are kind of strained getting into low bar where they don't feel the same strain in high bar. So there's, there's some differences in regards to what's stimulated and uh, what is uh, kind of like purposefully not stimulated. <laughs> so if you want to avoid lower back uh, stress, high bar is better. If you want to, you know, kind of, um, so for example, with strength, the the difference between the two positions uh, is considerably influenced by f like femur length. So if somebody has long femurs, femur is your upper leg bone. If somebody has a uh, very long upper leg bones compared to the rest of their body. Like if you took um, kind of the shins, the upper leg bone, and the torso as like three parts. So if you're looking from the foot to the bar, where the bar is going to be in their upper back. If you were to look at the length of their shin, the length of their femur, the length of their torso, typically the shorter the femur, they're going to have a better chance and feel more comfortable doing high bar squats. The longer the femur, they're going to have uh, a better chance to kind of feel more comfortable doing low bar squats. Now, that's not, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's probably some type of, you know, asterisk in there where somehow in some condition it doesn't quite work that way. But in general, the longer your femurs are, uh, it's going to be necessary for your hips to go further back. So if you look at what's called the thrust line of uh, squats, where it's basically just a straight line down from the bar to your foot. If you look at that as a straight line, if somebody has short femurs, their knee and their hip, to, in order to get to parallel, don't have to be as far forward and behind the thrust line as if somebody has long femurs. If somebody has long femurs, then their knee and their hip have to go further out horizontally from the thrust line in order to get their knee and hips parallel. So to get to a parallel squat, the longer femur you have, the longer upper leg bone, the further away from the thrust line, the center of gravity, the knees and the hips have to travel. Since the hips have to travel further away, then the lever arm from the hip to the bar, that length places a greater and greater stress load on the lower back. This is all probably, I don't even know if I'm, anybody's following me anymore. <laughs> so I apologize if I've lost you. Uh, but if you were to draw a picture of a stick figure where they have a short femur versus a stick figure that has a long femur and you tried to get them to squat to parallel, both images are parallel, you're going to find that the person with a long femur, their torso has a much more forward angle than the person with a short femur.
since their torso has a more forward angle, the workload, the demand from their hip to their to the bar, the, the demand on their spinal, the muscles of their spine, the muscles of the torso is greater. So that's harder position than if the torso is more upright. So one of the ways to counter the difficulty of that position is to move the bar closer to the hips. I shorten the lever arm, so therefore I lower the stress load. So if my hips have to go further and further away from the center of line of gravity, the thrust line, then the lower the bar is on my back, my upper back, the, the less distance my hips have to hold the bar, so therefore it's, it's less workload. So that's going to make the low bar position easier for somebody with long femurs than a high bar position. It just decreases the amount of stress load in the core muscles. It also then decreases the amount of stress and workload that the glutes and hamstrings have to do to pull your hips back under the barbell and back towards the thrust line. So when you, when you flex your quadriceps, that helps to bring, like basically extend the leg, that helps to bring the knee back towards the thrust line as you stand up. And to some degree, it helps pull the hips forward. But mostly your glutes and hamstrings contracting are going to push the hips forward back to the thrust line. So the further away the knee and the hip have to get from the thrust line, the center of gravity between the bar and your foot, then the lower the bar is on your back, the easier that's going to be. But then the more workload it causes in the hamstrings and glutes in order to push the hips back under the bar. So hopefully that was somewhat able to follow. I don't have a clue. <laughs> so I apologize if I lost everybody. This is where you can send in questions and say, like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> so, uh, But hopefully that helped make somewhat sense. Is femur length has a big influence on whether you'd high bar or low bar. That's one influencing factor. Another influencing factor is what muscles do you want to develop? Are you developing your squatting strength to get better at Olympic lifts? Then you probably want to do high bar because Olympic lifts are in an upraised torso. Now, if you want to develop glutes and hamstrings, an argument can be made that low bar position helps to, helps to do that because it helps to emphasize greater work into the glutes and hamstrings. Now, if you don't want to thicken your torso, maybe you don't want to build your spinal erectors, you don't want to build your obliques, well, then I'd probably use more isolation movements for the glutes and hamstrings, like, you know, like uh, hip thrusters. Like, we have a machine in the gym called a Nautilus Glute Drive, which is a hip thrust machine. So I would rather have the, the athlete, if it's like a bikini or wellness athlete, you know, like, we can do a bunch of isolation work for the hamstrings and glutes, rather than a big, heavy compound that might build their obliques and spinal erectors. So... It kind of depends on who is doing the lift for what purpose, what muscles do you want, but then what outcome do you want? So there's a lot of, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of individual differences to the answers of who should high bar versus low bar squat. Then we also have ankle mobility that plays into this. If you have longer femurs, in order for you to not have to hinge so much at your hip, it's helpful to have your heel elevated to allow your knee to go forward from the thrust line a little bit more to get a greater degree of bend at the knee joint, which then lessens the demand of bend at the hip joint. So often people with long femurs, they, they tend to find benefit in wearing Olympic lifting shoes. So we have podcast number 807, which is a and a podcast titled, Should I Wear Olympic Lifting Shoes When I Squat? And that helps to answer and explain why that's the case. So sometimes people with shorter uh, femurs, they still very much find benefit to Olympic lifting shoes, absolutely, um, because there's an enormous benefit for even for them to share the workload between the knee joint and the hip joint, uh, especially if they do have well-developed quads and they're a little, like, you know, mound of muscle. <laughs> so they're going to do very well with that position. But in general, the, the end goal of a squat so when you get to the to the top of a squat, so after you go down and back up, the end goal of a squat has to have your torso upright. You want to be standing up <laughs> at the end of a squat. That would be a pretty successful squat. So the more upright you can keep your torso throughout the squat, it does tend to make it just easier to squat. This is often why in powerlifting, you'll see powerlifters, if they're built correctly for it and they can do it with their body type, they'll take this ultra-wide, crazy-ass stance, 
and they'll keep their torso upright and they sit into their upper inner hamstring connectors and adductors and for the love of god they just hope they never blow off but they'll take a very wide stance very upright torso squat and they'll use the adductors and hamstrings and glutes uh, or if they're using like squat gear like they'll wear like briefs and whatnot uh, but they're going to they're going to try to maintain an upright torso position because it's just easier to put the workload into the thigh muscles and the hip muscles because they have greater workload capacity, like strength capacity, um, the muscle tissue capacity, as compared to, say, like our, our spinal erectors and abdominal muscles. So often, if you can maintain an upright torso in squatting, that does help, assuming you can also get to parallel. Because if you do power lifting, you have to get to parallel. If you don't do powerlifting, you don't have to do parallel. It's not like, you know, some, uh, it's not like squats don't count in regards to getting benefit from them if you don't squat to parallel. There's tons of aesthetic athletes who barbell squat to build up their thighs, but they don't squat to parallel. They might be an inch or two or three higher, higher than parallel, but there's no need for them to get down to parallel. So we also have podcast number 523, which is a training podcast titled Squat Depth Based on Goals. Not everybody has to squat the parallel. So if you do want to squat the parallel, then if you have long femurs, it might be uh, in your favor to do a low bar position. So if somebody were to try to do a high bar position and to get to parallel, but their lower back started kind of rounding and tucking and they felt like their lower back was annoyed when they squatted, well, that's a warning sign. Or if you feel like you can't get to a parallel because uh, you're basically your heels uh, are shifting or sliding or moving or you notice you kind of fall forward into your toes, that's a warning sign. Or if in order to get to parallel with the high bar position, you have to arch your spine, like you have to basically contract your back as hard as possible and your, and your spine is no longer a neutral, healthy position just as if it would be when you were standing, but it's actually arched up. It's almost like you're trying to like stick your chest up and out when you squat. That's a red flag. So if any of those things are happening and you're high bar squatting, uh, so like we said, if you're high bar squatting and your lower back rounds and your back hurt, lower back hurts, or if you're high bar squatting and you fall forward into your toes in order to get to parallel, or you're high bar squatting and you have to arch your upper back and basically like kind of bend over backwards, it feels like, in order to get to parallel. None of those are healthy. None of those are what you should do. You should definitely switch to low bar position and possibly even wear Olympic lifting shoes and then develop the muscles you need around your joints. But that low bar position is going to help all of those issues. So if you're high bar squatting and you notice your lower back rounding and your lower back hurt, switch to low bar. If you're high bar squatting and you feel like you're falling into your toes at the bottom in order to get to parallel, switch to low bar. If you're high bar squatting and in order to get to parallel, you have to arch your back super hard, switch to low bar. All of those things are going to help you stay in better position where your spine stays uh, neutral, where your lower back doesn't round or your upper back doesn't have to arch, and you get to stay flat footed in your feet. You don't get shifted into your toes. So it's better to have your joints and bones be in healthy, neutral positions and then make the muscles work to develop the movement that you need to complete the exercise. So I have no clue if this was helpful. I hope so. <laughs> but there are uh, definite positives and negatives uh, to high bar versus low bar. It just kind of depends on what your outcome goal is. And then what your body type is. Okay. So listen to podcast 523, training podcast titled Squat Depth Based on Goals. Listen to podcast 807, Q&A podcast titled Should I Wear Olympic Lifting Shoes When I Squat? And then try high bar and low bar squats. See what feels comfortable for you. Listen, like watch tutorials on YouTube. And then if you have any other questions beyond that, just reach out. Our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. I'm always available for 
help. I'm always happy to help. You can also just send me a video if you want of high bar squatting and low bar squatting. You can send videos on Instagram to our account, Brutal Iron Gym, Facebook Messenger, that works as well. Um, and then email if they fit in an email, depending on the size of the video. Please try to clip the video to where it's just you squatting, not like 17 minutes of you loading the bar. <laughs> I do get those sometimes, and it's like, oh, God, fast forward. So, uh, But if you send in the videos, I will promise I'll respond, uh, and I'll give you some feedback. Well, thank you for listening to today's podcast. I hope it did help. If you have any follow-up questions or you want to you know, get any clarity on anything, our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. I want to make sure you always get what you need from it. So don't be afraid to reach out. I, I love when people reach out. I love hearing about the listeners. It's super exciting. Uh, just it's, it's really motivating. So don't ever feel like you're going to burden me with emails. I love them. It motivates me and fires me up to keep doing this every day. So thank you very much. If you like today's podcast or our podcast in general, please consider sharing it. The more people we share it with, the more people we can help. And also thank you to the patrons of the podcast, the people who financially support the podcast. Uh, the podcast is well over $1,000 a year. I give an hour to it uh, every day. I would love to keep it for free, and I'd love to keep it on a daily basis. And it's only thanks to the patrons that I can afford to actually do that with any reasonable business sense. <laughs> so thank you to those who do give uh, gifts, financial gifts, financial donations. And if you're wanting to do that, you can do that now on our website at www.brutalironjim.com. We have a space there. You can do a one-time donation, monthly donation, yearly donation. Uh, if you do it at all, I appreciate it very, very much. We all do. <laughs> so that we can keep listening to this. So thank you. If you like the information we share in our podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Gym. If you have any questions, feedback, suggestions, anything you want to know, let us know at our email at brutalirongym at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening. <laughs>